let's do the body. I'm going to move him over there. I'm not sure if you guys can still see him. So I've got the sleeve because most of the sweater had all the decorative stitching and stuff on it. So I'm trying to figure out because I if I do this right, I can get two gnomes out of here. So I'm going to I'm gonna cut it. And I did this the way I did this one was I used the whole sleeve and I cut the seam and wrapped it that way, but I'd like to get another gnome out of it. So um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick break and I'm going to find part of the sweater to make a bottom and we're going to sew that on like kind of like we did our bumblebee gnome and I'll show you how I did it and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I'm going to take, I cut, I put this on my sock and needed to see if I needed to sew it, if it was too big and it's not, it's just perfect. So this is the cuff of the sleeve. So then I put it on here and I cut a circle and I just made sure it was a little bigger than the what I have here so that we have so we can sew it so we have a seam allowance okay so we're just going to take and turn this right side or the wrong side out and then we're just going to pin this if you can do this without pinning it more power to you but I can't <laughs> not when I'm sewing a circle and I think you would lose you wouldn't be able to hang on to it and get it so you might not sew something so part of it that's not supposed to be sewed or whatever it's just easier to pin it and it goes a lot quicker and then you're able to see if your circle is too big then you just have to unpin it and just cut it down if your body is too big then you would just have to unpin it and take your um, take the body in a little bit. And this is just perfect and it'll stretch a little bit. Okay, so I am going to bring you over to the sewing machine. So hang on and I will be back at the sewing machine. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so I'm over at the machine and I had sewed and wasn't recording. So I'm just gonna kind of go over this, how I did it. So I'll just sew it again. So you're gonna want, if you wanna take your pins out as you're going along, that's fine. But I didn't and it was okay. And you just want to make sure that your end, the bottom of your fab, of your base, is not tucked under, that it's all pinned and you're sewing both of the body and the bottom together. And then I am turning this and I'm just hanging on to the middle and turning it as I'm going around. And I'm coming back to the beginning and I'm going to back stitch. And that's how I sew my bottoms on when I use a sleeve. Okay, I'm back. And let me pick up my pins here so they don't end up on the floor and in my foot or someone else's so make sure you got all your pins out before you turn it inside out 
and I am not going to cut any of this excess off. I want to make sure that I got the bottom and I see there's maybe a couple of spots and I'm going to check it. I think right over here, I need to take it in a little bit more. And right there. So I will be right back. Okay, so I'm back. So I sewed over that and it should be okay, but I, I'm not gonna cut any of that off. It's not gonna matter. If it was a huge amount, I would, but it's gonna be okay. And there we have our bottom. And we're gonna put this on. So here's the heel of the shoe, of the sock. And this is gonna be my front. Just the way it always ends up that way. It's just like that, it's made for the head, for the front. So then I'm just gonna adjust my bottom before I go and tighten everything up so that if I have the seam down flush with the bottom and not a big old piece of the seam sticking up up here from the bottom. And then we're gonna tie that off And I can show you, I wanted, we went to, me and my husband went to Rummer Sales. Um, this is Sunday night, May 2nd, I'm filming this, and we went to Rummer Sales yesterday. And I tried to find some sweaters that were um, like this, and I just really couldn't find anything. And I kind of took a green sweater that I had bought, I don't remember if it was at a Rummer Sale or a thrift store. Um, I think it was at a thrift store and I'll show you what I did, how I kind of made fabric like this and I made a hat out of it and what I used. So when we get done, when I get to the end of the video, I'll show you. So you're just going to tie this off and probably cut some of that. Just so this, I mean, I could have not tied it because it was long enough, but I just don't want it to be loose and um, sliding around. And then cut your string about an inch, half inch from your knot. And I think we'll just cut this excess off. We do have to make arms. So we have to do those too. And that's sewed just like I usually do. And let me see. I have got to find a piece because I kind of forgot about my arms. So I think I'm going to use this here because I don't have to hem it. So I'm going to get this. So this is part of the collar, I believe, of the piece. I'm just looking to see what other pieces I have because I made quite a few hats out of the sweater itself and then the sleeves I used my um, for the body. Okay, so I'm just going to take a quick break and make some sleeves and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I thought I was recording and my phone stopped. So, um, what we did was I put the, the um, body on, like I, we sewed the bottom. I put it on, I tied it, cut the excess off, 
and I made arms out of pieces of the sweater and when you make your arms you have to make sure that this is all going to fit in here so your arms got to be big enough and then I cut the end of the wire that was sticking out I cut that off and then I put some glue in here so that it can't poke anybody and that'll go inside the arm and I did the the same on both so now we can put these in and you're going to want the seam side down if you want this up because you really can't see where the seam is it's right here if you want that up this one doesn't have it it's just plain so because it's just me <laughs> I'm going to have it down So we're just going to kind of bring that over his hand a little bit and we're just going to glue it. Okay, so you're going to make sure your glue gun is clean so that you're not wiping. When you put that in there, that you're not dragging your glue gun across your hands, your hand or fingers. And I had to put a glue stick in. So I just kind of shove my glue gun in there a little ways and then press that down. And then we're going to do the other side. Let me get that one out. So make sure you, if you're going to put your glue gun in there, make sure it's clean. And then when you go to put it in there, you're not putting glue. Okay, so we got that one in there. And then we're going to put this one in. So we have to make sure, I have to make sure I know which I'm doing the top and the bottom, or the seam. And the only thing I find out, I found out about with sweaters is um, when you hem it, it really stretches the um, fabric, so then it kind of gets wavy. So I'm just going to kind of pull that up because this one is a little smaller. I did not have much to work with. I cut my sweater up for hats, and then I kind of forgot about the arms. But I have pieces I can make for my other ones. Okay, so there we have our hands. And this one I'm going to cut off. I just got some seam there. Okay, so then we're going to position our arms and I'm going to unstuff the head because I'm going to show you we're going to use a styrofoam cone so you're not going to want really any stuffing in for the head and I had um, I get the cones from the dollar store and they're those really I cut this one off like an inch or more and hollowed it out a little bit. Well, how I did it was I took a um, one of these cheap paring knives and went in at an angle, and then I was able to pop it out. And then if you need it deeper, you can kind of dig out there, but make sure you don't go too far in so you don't come out the on the sides, okay? I mean, it would be okay. It's gonna be under the hat, but you don't want a big gouge out of it or whatever. Okay, so we're going to put his hands on, and you're just going to want to find out where you want his hands, how far you want them to come out, and this is going to get glued right up here by where it, the body is, and I put some glue inside the sweater, the sleeve, and I'm going to glue that up there. And I'm going to glue that down. And then I'm going to lift this up and glue more under here. So 
So then by putting that wire in there, you're able to bend his hand a little bit and his arm. If his arm is too thick, if you want a, you know, a thinner arm, then just cut some of the material away before you wrap it with the um, black strip of felt. If you just want the hand in there and you don't want, you do this, you know, can do the sleeve however, or the hand and the arm however you want to. There's a way that works better for you. That's great. Okay, so this needs to be... So in this one, but I like it a little bulkier because he, that's, you know, that's kind of his personality. So I'm going to cut a little bit of this off. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue in the sleeve. So when I glue it, and be careful, it's going to be hot. And I'm going to find out where this one needs to come. So I got to turn it here so I get them. Okay, so right about there. And you're just going to figure out what side of the hand you want out. If there's a better side, they kind of, you know, I was trying to make it look like a thumb and then the fingers, but it kind of didn't end up being that way. So And I'm going to glue this a little bit further down here. Try to get his beard out of the way. And just press that. Okay, and I'm going to take this stuffing out because we... And I'm going to see if I'm going to have to... Okay, so I'm going to tie this off and then we're going to cut the excess off of the sock because we have to shove it in to the cone and glue the cone on top here of his head. So before you cut your sock too much, make sure you have enough to go into the cone. And I'm going to cut about half of it off. And I keep my um, stuffing in a tote bag. Because right now my craft area is in my dining room. So I keep it in this tote bag. Because the bag I get from Walmart is huge. So I'm just able to refill that and just have it hanging. So there we have, and when you get done here with his arms, if you want to glue them a certain way, or when we make his little um, stick, or whatever we want to call it. So that should be good. So we don't have much of a head, because we have to glue this cone on here. Okay, so now you're going to want to put a bunch of glue, and I should have had my large one plugged in. You're gonna want a bunch of glue in there and you kind of got to work quick so that it doesn't dry on you. And then you're gonna have to press that down and hold it. Because it will pop up on you. And then you want to make sure because he is kind of fat from his nose down to here with his hat. Like this hat I have is too small. I might be able to get it on there. I can try it. But I think it's going to be too small. Um, 
This was the hat that I made and I made it from this sweater and I'm trying to find my other piece of fabric that I had from that because I had a little bit of leftover and I think I probably put it in the bedroom. So let me go get it because I want to show you. It did turn out kind of cute. So I will be back in just a second. So while we're letting his head hat dry, this is how I did it. Was I just took, and I think it was a big piece. It was the, the front part. I'm going to move everybody out of the way. It was this front part of the sweater. So this was going to be great for the hat. So I just cut a chunk off and I've already made one hat. This almost looks like a witch's hat because I um, had too much of the ribbing down and I didn't want that. So I just flipped it and sewed it. And then I did a zigzag stitch. And that's what happens when you sew a sweater. It gets um, kind of ruffly like that, wavy. So I took this. And I got this at Hobby Lobby, I believe. It's kind of like that netting. It's it's back over where the floral stuff is. Um, I think it's in the aisle where like all the ribbon, big wide ribbon is. So I put that down first. And then I got this kind of yarn. I got this probably a couple years ago at the Dollar Tree. They had so many different colors. It was so pretty. I got, yeah, I got so many different colors. And I had the green and you can take and pull it apart. And if I can find this somewhere, I will link it below. So I was able to pull it apart and lay it on top of this. So let me show you. Just so if you want to do something like this and you can't find that sweater and it's like, I want that, you can kind of make your own. So I took here, I'm just going to cut this because I'm going to do it anyway. So this is kind of how you can create your own material. Is you're just going to take and bring, you're going to want to bring it down closer to the ribbing than I did. So I would bring it down like that. And then you're going to take a piece of this or whatever. If you can find something else that you can kind of lay over. I, this was about the only thing I had that I liked. I had some other stuff and I didn't like how it, it looked. And so I just laid this, I kind of pin was able to pin it somewhat. And so you kind of have to work at it. And so you get that all laid. And it kind of wants to pop and and this is variegated and so is this one but i just couldn't find even all the rummage sales we went to yesterday on saturday may 1st i couldn't find any sweater that kind of looked like this i haven't been to the thrift store to look so i would put that down and then I did another one, and if you want to do it so it's not down all the way, or if you want to do it at a different angle, and then take more of this. So I got all of that all laid out, and then I kind of pinned it here and there, and your pins can get hidden, so you have to be mindful when you're sewing. And I zigzagged, so I zigzagged all my edges, and then when I went in, and I just did a straight stitch and weaved back and forth just to tack down in the middle. And that's what I came up with with my hat. So I think it turned out pretty cute. Um, I just wanted some texture on it. And um, I think it looks, I think it looks good. I like it. So I would, it took me a little bit because I had so much um, uh, different I had yarn and I had some different ribbons and I had this and it's just like nothing except these two that I liked and I'm like okay so that's what I'm going to do. Um, 
So that's how I did this hat. And we can see what that looks like on him. And I have to look at it. That's not bad, but it doesn't match. The sweater doesn't match the other sweater, so I'm not going to use it because I'm just, that's kind of just the way I am. But um, I think the one I'm going to use is this one. So we'll see how this fits. And if I have to cut this cone off, I can cut that top off if it's too long. And if you wanted a point, you can always stuff it or see it's got a point and it should be okay. So let's see. I was trying to find something to get him up because I wanted him up just a little bit. And I like my hats to come down in the back. I don't know why I think it just lays nicer. And so that's why sometimes I just make them bigger and they end up um, coming down. If I make it too small, then I don't use it and then it's just going to be used for a smaller gnome. Okay, so that's how I'm going to do that. So we're going to tip him over and we're going to make sure our seam, if it's, if it doesn't go down the middle, you know, it depends on how your sweater is, if it's got a lot of different textures and stuff on it. And I don't go right close to the edge of the sweater because it will spread out. And then you're just going to lay that down really carefully. And press that and make sure that it doesn't pop up on you. That's why for me sometimes it's hard to use the socks from the Dollar Tree because they are so hard to just get down and I like the sweaters and the fleece. So now I'm going to take and I'm going to put a little bit of glue right here and we're going to wipe our glue gun off. Make sure there's no drips. I'm going to put my glasses on. And you're just going to do a little bit and you're going to be mindful if it's dripping and then just lay that down and then we're going to go, I need to go a little bit, I'm going to go on the sweater and go down the sides and then I'm just going to hold that and then glue the other side. And I have, and I will try to do that in the next couple of weeks, is um, I will show you how I made my trees. They're really easy. And I bought these wood cutouts, I believe, from the doll, uh, Hobby Lobby. And then I bought my... Um, yeah, I bought sticks. Well, I bought these ones, these whiter ones I bought at Hobby Lobby at Christmas time. So they were in the Christmas. And uh, the one I'm going to use today was one of these. And then I just painted it. So it was darker. So otherwise, go outside, go for a walk, and look for some sticks. Because we're going to make some trees. And I will do those. So I'll try to do like some of the accessories that I use when I do my gnomes. Okay, so now we gotta glue his feet. His feet, feet. So now you just wanna see when you look at them, the bigger ones, if you want, how you want them. And I think that looks good like that. So we're just going to glue those right, right like that. We're going to just really glue them. And this you're going to have to hold for a little bit. You're not going to be able to put them underneath the hem very much. So 
it's like his shoe, his feet are going to be pointing up and, um, that's why when I did that one, this one, I did the eyeshadow on the bottom so it looked like they were dirty. So we're going to hold that. I'll be right back. Okay. So let's get the other one. I think we had it like this. And I got to turn him so I see where I'm getting his feet. And you're going to want to probably stand him up to make sure that he, the way his feet are. But isn't that adorable? And I'm getting glue on my cutting mat. I got a cutting mat and I think it was a Fiskars and it was, didn't even look like it was hardly used for a dollar. <laughs> it was just like, and I did get glue on the bottom, but that'll dry. If I had to, I can cover that up. I could um, just glue a piece of felt or green felt or something, or if I had part of the sweater on there. Um, but we're just going to let that dry. And while he's drying, let's make his little stick. And... So I have some of this um, wire. It's grapevine wire. I got this at Hobby Lobby. And they have different colors. They have this. And they actually have a green one too. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to wrap this around the branch. Or the, yeah, the branch. And if you have to use a pair of needle nose players and try not to poke yourself and then just squeeze that so that end is so if I were to give this or sell this I would have to put on there that it's not a toy um, and that there is probably sharp edges. And I think I'm just going to put a dot of glue down there. And if I have to cover that up, I can put moss on it. Okay, so we have that. And I have these little, um, this is from a bush that I got at um, Greenery that I got at uh, Walmart and the whole thing was these little type of leaves and I'm going to put my glue gun back on low temp and I just cut off the stems and used those and where's his little stick so we're going to get that out of the way so I glued it and then I did put some moss on it and so you want to find out where, and I'm going to probably cut this down because I think it's a little tall. I'm at the wrong gnome. Okay. So we're just going to glue some leaves on, and I just put the glue on the stick and then put the greenery on there. Let me get you a little closer. Okay, so you're just going to want to go and just put your leaves on wherever you want. You can use, if you have other kind of leaves, whatever you have, um, on these ones, um, this was from like a Christmas and um, I really, it's more plasticky. But I really liked it for the tree, so I thought that worked out good. And then this one I had was from um, Christmas, the frosted leaves. And I, if I got those at Hobby Lobby at Christmas time. So you just have to look around. Um, I'm not sure what the Dollar Tree has. 
they didn't have much greenery this in the beginning of this year so that's why i ended up going to walmart and then just glue your leaves on here and there i gotta cut that stem off so i cut the stem off so i don't have to really worry about trying to hide that or poke it in somewhere and some of my leaves are falling So it might take a bit for them to dry. And then if they're dry, or if they're done drying, you need to add a little bit more glue onto them. You can do that so that they'll stay. And then I did put a little marble on the top. I had one of my friends from high school. She lives um, not too far from me. Well, I'll, we live in the same surrounding area. She's more. She's a lot further north of me. But um, so she gave me a whole coffee container full of rocks and the like decorative glass rocks and stuff and it had a bunch of marbles in there and I wanted to do a stick for him so I did um I put the marble I had an I was going to do a um like these knobs the glass knobs you can get from well uh Hobby Lobby but it was too big and so I just used the marble and then I have some moss and then I just put some glue on the tree. And then just put a little bit of moss on there. So it doesn't take, I mean, I have a whole bag of this. I think I got it at Joanne's of the the green and the brown and we're going to decorate his hat we're going to do some of that on his hat so now we're going to take and we're going to glue the rock or the marble and you're just going to put the glue on top so if you don't have one of these if you have something else if you maybe have some kind of a decorative button or whatever you can use that And if you want to kind of hide your glue from your branches, you can just put some moss on there, whatever. This is just to give you ideas of what you can do. So we have to let that sit up and I'm just going to poke it in this wire here if I can get it to stand up just like that. Okay. And I do have a couple of birds. And my birds, I found them. There was this local store um, in my town. And I got my birds there for 50 cents. Um, so you would have to look at your craft stores, Joann's. Um, I don't think Walmart has anything like this. Um... Hobby Lobby, I know they do. Um, but yeah, you kind of have to look around. Um, so we're going to put some moss on his hat too. So just put some glue here and there. So if you buy a big bag of moss, it, it's going to last you for quite a while. So you want to put it on the on the hat because you're not going to be able to put it on the moss. And then if you need to trim some of the moss off after, you can do that. So I know my last few videos have been kind of lengthy, but their gnomes are a little bit more detailed, but... Um, 
sometimes it's kind of hard to edit stuff out that I haven't showed you guys how to do or I'm not sure if you know how to do or just show you how I did it. And now I have to look at him because I have to know when to stop with this moss. And I thought it would be cute to put some moss between his toes. So I'm just going to give it a little haircut. Put a little. Okay, so you're well able, or able to bend his arms, but I'm going to glue him a little bit more. I got to get the fur out of the way. Okay, so, and this should be dry. And I didn't glue that one in place yet because I, I didn't want to, if I needed to take it out. And this one I think will glue. So I would take and put it on his hand, kind of right by the hand and the, where the sleeve starts. So we're just going to let that sit. And then if you want, you can take and put, I'm going to glue his arm on the bottom here so I can put the bird. So I glue his arm when I get done where I no, I want it to be if I'm going to put him holding anything or anything sitting on his hand like the bird. So let me look. Okay, so I'm going to glue this one right here. And you could probably look on Amazon for these little birds. They're very, t some of them are really tiny. Others are a little bigger. And we're just going to let that sit there. And I got glue strings everywhere. So let me show you how I did the makeup and, on the feet. And then we're done. And I just got um, the eyeshadow from um, the Dollar Tree. And I have to find it. So I have this little brush um, that I used and I did do some on his nose and I did some of like a peach color kind of, I have to make sure you guys are seeing what I'm seeing. Okay, I'm going to back you up a little. So I pounced some of it off and I did go on him do his nose. I usually don't, but just for this one because it was the woodsy and he might be kind of dirty. And then I just took a brown and just brushed it on that felt that we put on. If you have a darker brown or whatever, but I just got my eyeshadow kit from the Dollar Tree. So I didn't buy any, any expensive eyeshadow for this. I actually bought it for myself, but I never used it. So.
and they do have makeup brush brushes too or you could use a paintbrush you can do that and now I'm going to take the side of the eyeshadow brush and I'm going to go in between his toes so if you used a different color thread and you're going to do this and you think it shows my thread shows and I doesn't bother me even if I didn't do this So the end, the side of that brush, you're able to get into those crevices. And if you want to just brush that and kind of blend it in, then you can do that. And we can even do his hands. Just kind of highlights it, gives it some definition. It's kind of hard to see with this light that I got. So I'm trying to do this so you guys can see and trying to and then take your brush and kind of blend it in a little bit. So there we go. There is our woodland gnome. I think he turned out adorable. Yeah, let me get rid of some of my stuff. So if you guys like my channel, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, click on that subscribe button. And when you click on the bell, that will notify you each time I upload a new video. If you already have subscribed to my channel, thank you for supporting me and joining my crafting community. If you have any questions, any comments, you want to know what I used on something, if I don't list it, um, something I did that I didn't explain well enough or that I missed, um, I welcome your feedback. It just helps me to give you guys better content, better videos. Um, so, yeah, if um, there's a tutorial or something you want me to do, let me know, leave a comment, and I will get back to you. Thank you guys for joining me today. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.